Yeah, so um, kind of going to go off script for the first one just because we did have a Twitter space a year ago. So, Gavin, if you wouldn't mind, like, maybe providing you guys a story as well as kind of that growth path from the past year and how you guys are doing a little bit of, like, a community update uh, kind of starting off. Yeah, for sure. So, so our story essentially starts with um, the lending space, how we know it, right? And I'm not only talking about the DeFi lending space, which we all know, but also the underclerized lending space uh, from the real world, so to say. Um, because essentially, you have two two choices. You can either take an underclerized loan in the real world, uh, apply for a loan, go through a bunch of credit checks, um, very trust based. Uh, and we saw one year ago uh, how that plays out if one of the bigger players doesn't pay their loan back. And because of that, underclerization has quite a negative notion to it, um, whereas in reality, the problem with that is the trust basedness, right? You, you rely on the other party to pay you back. You're trusting that they pay you back. And if they don't, then you're the one with the problem if the loan is big enough. So because of that, we also have overclerized protocols. Uh, they are the solution to the, uh, the, the trustless protocol, so to say, the solution to the trust-based uh, lending system, uh, like an Aave, Compound, MakerDAO. Um, the downside of those is that you have to have the capital in the first place. So if you want to take out a $100,000 loan, you have to first give them $120,000. Um, it's not only very, um, very, like as a borrower, it doesn't really make sense for most borrowing use cases, but it's also extremely capital inefficient for you as a lender because you're not only competing with other lenders like you would usually do, but every borrower is forced to be a lender in the first place as well. So you have supply and demand, but everyone is forced to be a supplier, which is why the rates are inherently low on those types of platforms. So once we saw that uh, issue, we were looking just like a lot of other builders, uh, looking for a solution for that, like the holy grail, finding something that is both underclerized from a user perspective, but at the same time trustless, right? That doesn't um, that doesn't give in on the security side of it. And then we came up with the escrow smart contract. So um, essentially, it allows you to instead of sending the loan out to yourself, we to your own wallet, we create a new dedicated smart contract on chain that is solely your surety, sole owner of it, but there are safety features in place. Uh, so for example, Walled Garden, and in creating this escrow smart contract, um, we can put your collateral there, or you do it yourself, you put your collateral there, the borrowed funds go there, so if you have 100K collateral, you borrow 200K, it all goes in that escrow smart contract, and it allows for safe, trustless, on the collateralization. And that was our, that was our main mission. Um, when we launched back in January, initially, understandably, there was, in the months before that, there was quite a lot of pushback from, uh, a, lot of, from a lot of people who had that negative connotation still on their tongues, right? From the undercollateralization, as, as we've seen in the past, in the trust-based lending systems, uh, thinking that it would be exploited within the first couple of months. We did focus a lot on security uh, with Dots Prime. We can get a little bit deeper into that later as well. Um, but as we have developed over the past year, I have shown that we can handle a lot of liquidity. Right now, we have $40 million in total in TVL. We have about 5,000 users across uh, two different chains on Avalanche uh, with $28 million. Um, this, trust is, this trust is really beginning to build, right? And that takes time. Um, a lot of time, a lot of effort, but the um, community that we have, primarily in our Discord, very active community, uh, giving a lot of suggestions. We're trying to implement a lot of that as well. Uh, it's yeah, really excited to become a more grown protocol in the Avalanche space. Okay, amazing. So I think a lot of people were familiar with other kind of under collateralized lending protocols such as Maple, uh, Clearpool, etc. As and then. Also, those protocols that are more similar to Delta Prime itself, whether that be Gearbox. Um, and I think you mentioned some of the disadvantages of kind of the less similar protocols. But I guess compared to something like a, a Gearbox, what are the advantages that Delta Prime has over Gearbox? The main one, I would say, really, um, there, there are two, two really big ones. I think the most distinct one is... And we, Camille, our CTO, built it himself. It's called the Diamond Beacon Proxy Pattern. It's a way of developing um, that allows you to bypass the uh, maximum contract size um, that you usually have 
on EVM uh, on the EVM uh, system. So in doing so, we're uh, we're able to scale infinitely, but also it works like a plug and play system, which allows us to scale very rapidly in a safe way. And if you look at for you mentioned Gearbox before, they were extremely big. Uh, they had a hundred million dollars, I think. But this DeFi space is evolving so quickly. They're so rapidly becoming new protocols, going going off protocols. It changes so rapidly that you have to be able to safely scale, right? And and we're able to do that. There's a whole video on how this works technically in our doc, in our docs. Would highly recommend uh, going through it. Um, but that, that's the main differentiator. Uh, and then a second one is, and that also leads to faster uh, or to scalability, is that dot prime like so we don't have. We're not a DAO yet, right? A Gearbox, they work as a DAO. We don't work as a DAO yet. We focused initially on scaling rapidly and safely, um, doing it like this. In the near future, we're going to bring our token out. A lot of people, they know about that already uh, due to partnerships that we have as well and what we've communicated about it. And we will turn into a DAO, making it fully decentralized. But because we are not one right now, it allows us to just move really quickly and adapt to the market super quickly. And you see that in how we've been building over the past year. Yeah, that's what Prime is interesting. And in that's like, you guys are almost like, um, can integrate with pretty much any protocol in the ecosystem. Um, I think, you know, the, there's a lot of it, protocols you guys are already integrated with, right? For kind of, it's kind of like the core, you know, features of the platform. I'm sure this also like, you know, informs how you guys like think about security for the protocol as well. Uh, Gavin, do you, if you don't mind, like, can you I just dive into some of the, the integration you guys have so far, you know, things coming up, and also just uh, how you guys approach each, you know, kind of partnership integration process? Yeah, for sure. So um, one main one is the one that we uh, came together uh, today for, uh, which is uh, GMX uh, and GM tokens. Um, they have been... They have been very popular even before before we started this incentive program. Not through this incentive program, there has been a lot of extra attention on it on it as well. But next to next to GMX, uh, we have integrations like Trader Joe, which is uh, a major player in the Avalanche ecosystem. Um, a yield chat. We've recently integrated the what I call the X Apexes, so YY Apex, GG Apex, um, and in doing so, allow for more Delta, like the more different type of integrations that we have, the more different strategies that you can create on Delta Prime as well. So for example, with the GM uh, that I just mentioned, if you have Apex USD and you already have Apex USD GM right now, you can have that in your Prime account in a way that you are leveraged long on Apex, you can be leveraged short, or you can be Delta neutral and rebalance your position regularly, right? So. As we get more different integrations in, um, it allows you to combine different protocols with each other, to combine uh, different um, exposures uh, on the underlying assets. Um, and for every pro, so the main function, so the main uh, decision that we make whenever we get a new protocol in isn't necessarily the API immediately, the most. Although that's also important, of course, there needs to be demand for the, for the product because it does take time, even though we are relatively fast. But the most important thing by far is security. So uh, has, the, has the protocol been audited? Um, is there a time lock in place, multi-sig, things like that. Um, that? That's the most important thing. Now, our CTO is very, very focused on that. So uh, he goes uh, with every new protocol that we get into that plan, we go through that whole list. Of course, we can't guarantee that there will never be an exploit in one of the underlying protocols. So we have uh, partnerships with, for example, a Hexagate as well. They monitor our underlying protocols. Uh, we also have a partnership with Atomica. They provide an insurance pool and we have our own insurance pool built up over the last year of over $1 million right now. So there's a bunch of what if it goes wrong. Um, but yeah, you try to you try to prevent that uh, at the front, of course. So that's the most important thing that we look at whenever we do a new integration. Yeah, that's, that's super helpful. And you mentioned like, you know, there's a bunch of protocols integrated, a lot of different strategies available for users. I guess like today in, in today's market, um, what, what have you seen being kind of the most common? You know, are, are people just like <laughs> stacking up on leverage and, and going long on certain a certain assets or certain certain uh, certain pools within the ecosystem? What have you been seeing like, you know, as of late? 
Yeah, so sometimes. There, there are, I would say, three types of users on the, um, on the borrowing side. First of all, you also have the deposit side, right? Like the, those are the people that would otherwise lend out their assets on an Aave, on a compound, or a Mekadao. Um, they, will, they just want to put their AVEX somewhere, be sure that it's still there when they come back in three months, and if it also increased a little bit in the meantime, all the better, right? So those are the depositors, and all the security features that I just mentioned, didn't yet mention the audits that we do ourselves as well, of course, and that we do with third parties. Um, but all that is primarily to protect that, to make sure that the money comes back, because that's, that's the most important thing. Um, then for the strategies for the borrowers, it differs quite strongly. There are like the real agents, they use it for trading. Very often, Delta Prime is useful if you're a trader, if you want to hold your positions for a longer period of time. So if you want to do a one day, two day trade, or even if you're a day trader, Delta Prime probably is not the best protocol for you. Whereas if you want to hold a position, let's say you are bullish on Apex, and you want to hold your Apex position for one, two, three months, you might as well have it in DeFi as well, right? Uh, whether you do it through a liquid staking token or whether you do it uh, through, for example, a GM uh, token or through GMX. Um, if you have a leverage position, you might as well put it to work. And that's something that Delta Prime offers that really no other protocol offers like us. So you have those users. I myself, um, and if you've been uh, in the Delta Prime, uh, if you've been in our Discord for a while, you know that I'm a big fan of Delta Neutral strategies. So the type of strategy that gets rid of the underlying exposure for me. At the same time, I do also have a bullish portfolio, so I definitely I won't miss out, no worries. But Delta Prime is so it, it is very powerful, right? Especially for example with this Gem Incentives program, we've done a similar program somewhere else that ended now. But you can use Delta Prime. For example, yeah, take take GM, take Apex USD, right? And you see that there is because you can see the composition of the uh, GM token on Delta Prime, like in the UI, and you see hey, it's fifty percent Apex, fifty percent USD, uh, USDC. At the same time, I see that the open interest also something that you can track on Delta in the Delta Prime UI directly. It will be there from uh, on Avalanche from tomorrow, so that's a new feature actually. The open interest is sixty percent, so. The counterparty is 60% bullish. What you can do is be 60% bullish yourself, provide that liquidity through to GM, and then you can leverage it up with three, four X. I myself tend to do four X and have, and actually lower the risk as compared, lower the price risk specifically, as compared to only providing GM, uh, if it use the GM directly. So you have a lower price risk if you do that, at the same time, you're gathering not only the incentives that we're giving out with this program, but also extra fees that's being generated by the GMX community. Right? So you're generating compounded fees. You, have, you don't have the compounded price risk. You don't have the leverage price risk. And as a plus, if you look at what GMX has been doing over the past week since we started this program, GMX V2 has doubled in TVL, and 12 million of that comes from Delta Prime. Right, so and moreover, nine million of the twelve million comes from lenders. So lenders that lend their assets out on Delta Prime, borrowers they're borrowing this nine million, they're putting it in GMX, and all of a sudden GMX their pools increases in size, which allows for bigger trades as well. So not only do you help yourself with creating a strategy like this, but you also help the overall ecosystem. GMX is a huge protocol; it has a very good brand, a very good name. It is the type of protocol that attracts whales from other ecosystems. So supporting a protocol like this to move smoothly from their V1 to their V2, I think that only benefits the whole chain and, and the DeFi ecosystem as a whole. Um, so yeah, the, just, just to uh, emphasize that there are very different things that you can do. If, if you're bearish on the market for whatever reason, or you become bearish on the market, you can also uh, swap your debt. So let's say initially you were bullish, uh, and that's what a lot of our users do. That's why we do have a lot of volume going through Delta Prime. Uh, you're bullish on the market, you have um, only USDC borrowed, minted all AFEX USDC with that, and now you become bearish, then you can swap your debts from USDC to AFEX. Now you have a, a short on AFEX. I'm not recommending anything, clearly, uh, definitely not a short, but like that's, that's the, the freedom that you have with that. That's something that Delta Prime gives, and that's something that we see that our users uh, very happily uh, make use of.
Yeah, and I think over time, like only more strategies are going to unlock, and uh, you know, the, these knock-on effects that you're describing with the ecosystem. That's you know, that's exactly what we what we aim for, right? Composability with between DeFi protocols, and then you know, as we launch each of these programs, right? Um, you know, we're we're hoping that it benefits to more than more than one uh, project in the ecosystem. I guess uh, a question from my side is: you mentioned integrations with protocols like Yodiak, and I think our users have probably seen Yodiak as kind of Delta Prime, uh, quote-unquote, savings accounts. Um, how does that work in collaboration with Yodiak and Delta Prime? Yeah, so while we don't like to play favorites, really, like we, we don't want to be biased to only have, uh, to, to have one protocol dominating uh, the others, because essentially Delta Prime acts a little bit like a arena, so to say, where the best protocol accumulates, and, and the best protocol that, that changes, right? There was a very long time that a lot of people were in Platypus. Um, as soon as that went wrong, like they moved to other protocols, to a yield check, to a Trader Joe, it's a very popular one. Um, but that means that, yeah, we are we are very close with yield check in, um, in, in different terms. And they have supported us right from the start, from before we launched. So a big part of their community is also uh, part of the Delta Prime community, and what that leads to, and that, that, that's why we why we love like collaboration, like strong bonds with other protocols. What it leads to is that whenever we want to make an integration, let's say we want to integrate a wombat pool or a poolside pool, right? And we want, uh, and they are giving away uh, incentives as well that you could auto compound, which is something that Yocheck could. We does we can go to Yocheck and ask them, hey, is this something that you can? integrate in your in your product as well now with something like that there's a clear benefit for them right there's a clear benefit for them to integrate one of these pools especially if we're going to integrate it into Delta Prime as well because more if, if there's demand for this there's more tvl going to yield check going through wrong again allowing for larger trades to be made as well so it benefits the ecosystem as a whole for the savings account specifically that you mentioned um the benefit for yield check is the direct benefit is not really that existent. Um, so for users, there's definitely a benefit because we calculate our APY from the savings accounts uh, forward. So what is the current utilization? Um, and based on that, what should you earn? Of course, that's variable, so it might change. Um, and therefore, yield check, what they do is they look at the last seven days. Right? So they look at the historical APY. They see, okay, over, over this time period, it has earned this. Um, so, not saying that one is better than the other, if we would believe that the historical one would, per definition, be better than we would show it like that. The, just the very differences, and some users, they prefer one over the other. The reason that you'll check uh, integrated our savings pools, I believe is mainly through, through Goodwill, and because they want to see this ecosystem grow, they want to see those prime grow, and it shows that because obviously, in the long term, it will also benefit them, because the more Delta Prime grows, the easier it becomes for bigger players to get into our pools as well. If our USDC pool, for example, is at 7.5 million right now, if that becomes $17 million, there's a whole new group of people, a whole new group of wills and hedge funds that you can access that we can't access right now, and that in the long term will benefit GeoCheck as well, as well as GMX, as well as Trader Joe. So I think their vision on that is uh, a little bit more future thinking. That makes sense. Yeah, so not sure if GMX is going to be able to join us today, and so maybe we kind of transition to this primarily being about Delta Prime and then uh, have GMX on at a later time, but um, I guess what what's like next for Delta Prime? Is there going to be a V2? Uh, you guys going to do a point system? I know you guys already have kind of um, uh, I don't know what I would call it, a representation of your token on the platform, something like that. What's in the, what's upcoming in the next few months? Yeah, so the token by far is going to be the biggest the biggest part of it. Um, we have been working on the tokenomics for quite a while. It isn't public yet, uh, but we have discussed it in depth with partners, investors, and I think most importantly with the community. Not with the full community. We had uh, twenty community representatives which have seen the tokenomics, which is, have given feedback. Um, and that's, that's going to be a major thing. Extremely excited for that. So that's definitely something that's going to come up. Um, and at the same time, like they're, they're, for example, on 
safety, we're working with uh, Hexagate still. What we want to do, so right now they're monitoring our contracts. What we want to do is to automatically withdraw whenever there is a critical risk of an expert in one of the underlying protocols, with the aim being that where Delta Prime would usually be an extra layer of smart contract risk, once you have that in, provided it works, and so far their, their um, system has been like top-notch, definitely 99.99% um, not false positive rate, so 0.001% false, false, false positive rate. Once that works, you kind of refer to the smart contract risk that you would usually have. So all of a sudden you have a prime brokerage protocol, you have Delta Prime, where the smart contract risk gets reduced instead of increased, right? Provided that we keep doing audits like we're doing right now. So that's also something that I'm very, very excited about. And then there are more integrations. Uh, we're constantly looking uh, for partnerships. I mentioned a couple just now already. Um, we have alluded to the possibility of getting our first meme coin on Delta Prime as well, uh, on Avalanche. Um, we are still in talks with all the teams that I've mentioned. Um, as long as we haven't put out a uh, public article. Usually we do a public article on what this means for you as a community member, what kind of new strategies you could play with, things like that. Um, but the most important thing, and that's why we haven't publicly announced it yet, again, most important thing is can we do this in a safe way? Um, that could come with, for example, um, a cap on the protocol, cap on the token, uh, things like that, or with, and that's something that's actually very, very new, we're very close to getting that in, uh, protocols will be able to underwrite their own insurance. So what I mentioned earlier is we have a um, $1 million insurance pool that we've created ourselves from liquidation fees over the past year. At the same time, we have a partnership with Atomica, which underwrites our pools as well for $500,000. But if you're a protocol that has, um, for example, that doesn't have the, that, that just doesn't score high enough on security that we feel comfortable integrating, with a cap, we can still integrate you. So we, in, we integrate you with a max token cap, max exposure cap that Delta Prime has on your protocol. You underwrite the risk. So if anything happens, there is insurance in place that comes from them. Um, and that allows us to integrate newer protocols, what would usually be more risky protocols or more risky tokens, in a way that doesn't increase the risk for our users. Um, and like I mentioned before, having more different tokens in, having more different protocols in, it scales exponentially. It allows you to create more complicated strategies, um, and especially for the more sophisticated DeFi user or hedge funds, that's something that's going to be super interesting. Amazing. I guess, um, is there any kind of parting thoughts or anything you wanted to say to the audience uh, before we open it up for any questions? Yeah, I guess, for, it, it's a shame, of course, that GMX isn't here because I really would have loved to dive to dive into the uh, incentive program that we've got that we have going on right now. Um, right now, because right now we have, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to mention numbers, but I would highly recommend to go to our platform and to have a look yourself at how it works. Um, what I can what I can briefly explain is that what we are incentivizing with this program is the borrowed amount. So we are here primarily to unlock liquidity from what we usually lie idle in an AVE in a compound, right? Like all that liquidity that, that doesn't do anything, that doesn't provide anything to the wider ecosystem. That's why we're here, to unlock that and to play that on to our partners. Like I mentioned before, the 9 million that's in the GM pools right now. If we provide $12 million of TVL to GM or uh, more accurately, if our users provide $12 million to GM, and $9 million of that is borrowed funds, regardless of how they've borrowed it, regardless of whether they're leverage long, leverage short, delta neutral, that $9 million, that's what's incentivized. And in doing so, we know that from the, um, that the only amount that's, we're, that we are incentivized, so the only amount really that uh, Avalanche and GMX are contributing to here, is the value add that Delta Prime brings to GMX. And you see that in the results so far. Um, and you see that as a user as well. If you have a little bit of a higher risk tolerance, if you are with, uh, if you are in terms of leverage, um, or if you're a more sophisticated user and you're able to use high leverage in a way that um, doesn't necessarily increase your risk, like 
those users they get they benefit the most from a program like this. So I would highly recommend to um, look at it. Would have loved to dive a little bit deeper into that, but we might be able to do it at a later point. Uh, but definitely give give the shot right now while uh, while we're still early. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Um, now we can open it up to the audience if they have any questions, Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody has any questions, feel free to hit this. Uh speaker button on the bottom here and, and pop one up and see if we could help answer those questions. But yeah, Gavin, definitely appreciate your time coming through. And yeah, we'll try to get Jonesy on for the next one and kind of uh, go through into how the two protocols work together and kind of dive into the incentive program a little bit and how the rewards are distributed and um, kind of how they work together. But in the meantime, um, it was great to kind of hear a one-year update on, on what you guys have been building and how everything's kind of played out. Um, since launch and so if anybody has any questions on the kind of the delta pi protocol overall and, and maybe uh how it works with gmx we'll, we can try to help answer that but yeah we'll, we'll give it a second if anybody has a question to to pop on up here and and then if not we'll um we'll post the spaces up on, on youtube so everyone can listen back into it and then we'll have to uh reset a time where we can get jonesy and the gmx team up here and we can talk through more of the details there but yeah definitely appreciate your time gavin Loved having you on again. Love seeing the progress and the growth of, of Delta Prime. I, I remember you and I talked back in Seoul about what was coming up and excited to see it all come to fruition. So, yeah, man, I uh, appreciate the time. Doesn't look like we have any particular questions up here yet. So, we can go ahead and, uh, and, and wrap things up. But, yeah, again, we're going to have you back on and we'll, uh, we'll talk about any of the other integrations that come up. Um, it sounds like there'll be more and more of that that start to open up and develop with some of the other awesome DeFi protocols on Avalanche. So yeah, appreciate your time. Um, Matt or Eric, if you guys have anything you want to share before we jump or, or Gavin, we'll kind of give you the last word uh, before we hop off here today. Yeah, I guess just wanted to shout out the Delta Prime team. <laughs> as we mentioned, they've been building kind of heads down throughout the bear and we had a Twitter spaces with them a year ago and it's really exciting just to see their progress over that period of time. And I think during the next bull market, they'll be one of our leading DeFi pr uh, protocols within the ecosystem. And so can't wait to collaborate farther with their team. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think uh, <laughs> a, lot, a lot to be said for the folks that stuck with us during the bear. So, you know, I really, really appreciate everything, uh, Gavin, and, you know, obviously the rest of your team. And uh, excited to see, you know, some of these... Uh, Initiatives we've been talking about, right, for the better part of the last year, come to fruition here. So it's a shame GMS couldn't attend, but I think here, you know, we made best use of our time here today. Yeah, it's it's early there as well. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next one uh, where they uh, where they'll join as well. Uh, appreciate uh, your guys' time as well to uh, have us here today, and for all the support you guys have given, like over the past, because we did indeed like build through the beer, become. Um, so semi-successful. Uh, I think we can be proud of what we've done so far. Although obviously we have uh, our goals set very high as well. Um, but that definitely is also uh, thanks to uh, thanks to the whole Apolabs team. So very happy to be here. Very happy uh, that you invited us again. And um, looking forward to the next one. Thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate it, Gavin. And uh, excited to see the success so far, and excited to see what's to come. And uh, we'll let you all know about the next spaces we get uh, the other teams on here. And we're going to be continuing this Unlocking DeFi Spaces series. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be doing one, one a week with various protocols, infrastructure providers, security tools, dev tools, all around kind of the DeFi space. So keep an eye out for more on that. And, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll see you all on the next one. So appreciate your time and hope everyone has a good rest of your day or evening, wherever you're at. And uh, Eric and Matt, thanks so much again.